This video will introduce you to joining a feature clause to a table and then symbolizing your layer using the newly joined attributes within ArcGIS Pro. Starting off in ArcGIS Pro and moving over to the catalog, we see that I've got a geodatabase containing a soils feature clause representing soil polygons for Addison County, and then an attribute table containing the top 20 soil attributes for the state of Vermont. Exploring the attributes of the soils polygon layer, we see that it has very limited information. It has the standard object ID shape, shape length, and shape area fields we would expect of all polygon feature classes, and then it has an additional attribute field, MUID, which was added by the NRCS, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, the creators of the data set. The top 20 attribute field also has a unique identifier, the object ID field, but no shape length or shape area fields because it's not geospatial data. It does have a whole host of other attributes which have been created by NRCS. The top 20 soils attribute table is extremely rich with soils information. It also contains the MUID field. This MUID field is the same unique identifier that exists within the polygon feature class. Right clicking on a field and choosing fields opens the fields view. This allows you to view the structure of your attribute fields. In examining both of the MUID fields for both the soils polygon feature class and the top 20 table, we see that they are both text data types. In reading the metadata, I found out that the MUID is a unique identifier for each soil polygon. Because the MUID fields in both the feature class and the table have the same data structure, I can establish a one-to-one -one join between the feature class and the corresponding information in the top 20 table. The benefit of doing a join is it's going to allow me to symbolize my polygon layer by the top 20 attributes. Right now, all I have is the MUID shape length and shape area field, and so I can go and change the colors of each and every polygon, or I can symbolize it by a unique value such as MUID, but this doesn't create a very meaningful view within ArcGIS. Because we have a match between the MUID field and both attribute tables, we can join the MUID field in the feature class to the MUID field in the top 20 table. To do this, we right click on the feature class, go to Joins and Relates, and choose Add Join. This will launch the Add Join geoprocessing tool. We'll set the parameters to specify that we're joining the MUID field from the polygon feature class to the MUID field from the top 20 soils table. Once the Add Join tool is finished running, we can open up the attribute table for our Polygon feature class, and in it we see not only the original attributes, but all the top 20 soil attributes from the table. This is the result of that one-to-one -one join between the MUID field in the Polygon layer and the MUID field in the table. There are two MUID fields in the table because we have the MUID field from the Polygon layer and the MUID field from the top 20 table. With the full set of attributes from the top 20 table joined to the polygon layer, we can now symbolize the polygon layer using any one of these attributes. Symbolizing a layer after a join is no different than how you would symbolize a layer without a join. To symbolize the soils layer based on flood frequency, I'm simply going to the Symbology tab, choosing Unique Values, selecting the flood attribute, which originally came from the top 20 table, and choosing to symbolize by each unique value. I can adjust the color scheme to match my preference. Just like we saw when we opened up the attribute table after the join, clicking on an individual polygon pulls up all of the attributes from the original polygon layer in addition to the associated ones from the top 20 table. Symbolizing your data does change based on the type of attributes you have available. Flood was discrete or thematic data because it was text values, but let's take a look at water depth. The water depth attribute field is numeric. Although I can symbolize it using unique values, it makes much more sense since it's numerical data to symbolize it using graduated colors. 
You can only symbolize data by graduated colors if the data are numeric. When symbolizing numerical data by graduated colors, it's important to note that the method you choose can have an impact on how the data are displayed. When you start adjusting the methods, you'll quickly realize that certain methods produce more optimal ways of displaying the data, or others can be misleading or not at all useful. In playing around with the methods for the rock depth field, we see that different patterns in the data are revealed as we adjust the method. ArcGIS has some excellent color schemes, but you can manually go in and change the colors for each unique value. You see me doing this here for the flood attribute, so that areas that are flooded more frequently appear red, and areas that are flooded not at all appear green. Here's another example of customizing the symbology. I'm using graduated colors to symbolize rock depth, but I'd like to get rid of the polygon outline so that my data are more easily interpretable when zoomed out. I'm going in and adjusting the symbol settings for all values so that there's no longer a polygon outline. Good symbology is only one part of making your layer more interpretable to the end user. The layer and the attribute you're symbolizing should both have meaningful names so that you and anyone else who makes use of this map can easily understand what is being represented. To symbolize your layer by multiple attributes at once, simply create a copy of the layer and then adjust your symbology accordingly. Here we have the soil polygon symbolized by rock depth, and then again symbolized by water depth. In both cases I've given the layer and the associated attributes meaningful names. In this video we showed you how to join a polygon feature class to an associated table that had a one-to-one -one matching attribute and then symbolize that polygon layer using the attributes from the join table. Keep in mind that a join created using the add join geo processing tool is temporary. It only exists within the ArcGIS Pro project. Closing the project without saving will mean that your join is gone. Both the feature class and the separate attribute table in this example maintain their own separate attribute fields.